Hello, I'm Michael Thompson. Today I want to talk to you about long option trading. This is considered the most basic of options trades, and yet, in a funny kind of way, it's sometimes the riskiest kind of options trade as well. When you buy a long option, you're hoping that the underlying stock will move enough points in enough time so that you can sell that option at a profit or in some cases so you can exercise the option and either buy 100 shares with a call or sell 100 shares with a put. There are many attributes to long options. First, the call. When you buy a call, you buy the right, but you don't have the obligation to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock at a fixed strike price. For example, if the stock is currently valued at 38 per share and you buy a 40 call that expires in three months, you're buying the right to purchase 100 shares of that stock at $40 a share. So let's say that the stock rises to 45. Now you have two choices before expiration. You can exercise that call and buy 100 shares at 40 even though its current price is 45. In this case you pick up five points of market value for that $200 investment in the call. We're assuming that the call cost $200 and so that's why you subtract the cost of the call from the increase in the market value. The other thing you can do in this point is you can sell that call. Now it uh, has five points of intrinsic value at this point, which means that the current price of the stock is five points higher <clears throat> than the call strike. So in this case, you would have paid $200. And then on the last trading day, for example, selling the call for five, you make a profit of $300. A put is the opposite. With a put, you're hoping the value of the stock goes down. And if the stock does go down far enough, you'll make money on the put. When you buy a put, you're buying the right, but not the obligation, to sell 100 shares of stock at the fixed strike. So, for example, if the stock today is worth 38 and you sell a 35 put, you're hoping the stock will fall enough below that level so that you can either sell or exercise that put at a profit. Because you've paid $200, let's say, for the put, you need the stock to fall to 33 in order to break even. 33 would be two points below the strike of 35. If it falls below that, <clears throat> you have two choices again. You can either sell the put for a profit, or you can exercise the put, which gives you the right to sell 100 shares of the underlying stock. But what if you don't own 100 shares of the stock? What happens in this case is you exercise the, um, the put, and you sell the shares at the fixed price at the same time you buy 100 shares at the market price and in effect you get the difference. So in this case if the stock had fallen to 30 you would exercise the put and sell 100 shares at 35 and at the same time buy 100 shares at 30 and keep the difference of $500 profit. There are a couple of problems with long options however. Three-fourths of them tend to expire worthless if held till the date of their expiration and the reason for this is that you're constantly fighting time decay. When an option is priced, it includes a time value premium. And what this simply means is that the closer it gets to expiration, the, uh, the more time decay comes out of the value of that option. So as, as expiration approaches, time decay accelerates. And so in the last month or two, it's very difficult to offset that time decay. For example, you might have an option that's gone into money and it might be increasing at a good clip. However, the time decay is outpacing that increase in value and so you're breaking even or maybe losing money. <clears throat> time decay is a great enemy to a buyer of an option, whether call or put. And in the examples given were the stock's at 38 and you buy a, th a 40 call or you buy a 35 put. In both of those instances, there's no intrinsic value. Both of those examples are out of the money, and so you would need a considerable amount of, of change in the stock's price in order to make money. That would mean having the, the uh, stock price rise in the case of a call far enough above the strike to make money, or for the stock price to fall far enough below the put in order to make money. So time is your enemy when you're a buyer. <clears throat> the second problem is proximity. The closer the strike of the option is to the current value of the, um, of the call or put, the more expensive the, uh, the, the option is going to be. So if your option is 40 and the stock is worth 39.50, that's only half a point. That option is going to be much more expensive than 
uh, another option which is five points away. And so uh, the, the advantage of, of a further away call or put is that uh, it's going to be cheaper, but you need more movement in order to make money. And so uh, the uh, factors of proximity and time versus the cost are a constant problem for all options traders. When you when you buy an option, uh, you're, you're actually taking on considerable risk because there's a three to one chance that it will not be profitable by the time of expiration. Options held to expiration expire worthless three-fourths of the time. And so this makes long option positions rather high risk. They're low cost, but they're high risk. Ironically, when you first open an options account and you're a relatively inexperienced options trader, your brokerage firm will let you buy options, but not much else. And so even though there are safer strategies, such as covered call writing, for example, you're restricted to just buying calls and puts because you're inexperienced in these other matters. And so you're limited to uh, transacting something with, uh, with not much of a chance of profitability and actually a rather high risk. But for most people, long options, either calls or puts, are a good starting point. So that's a good place to begin understanding how options work. <clears throat> Later on, you'll learn how to use those long options in conjunction with other positions to either hedge stock positions or hedge against other options in positions like straddles and spreads, which are more complex but often uh, mitigate risk levels or offset uh, loss potential in exchange for offsetting profit potential. So there's a lot to options and it start, all starts with an understanding of how long options work. So that's a good start.